Okay, uh, today's topic is going to be how to use uh, Linux to restore data that you may have lost, or may be in danger of losing, or if you're in a situation that you need to save your data and do a reinstall, you can use Linux to get to save your data. And another issue I'm going to have is about <clears throat> just basic. Um, it's going to be about security and some surprising things that that I've uh, been re-exposed to. Some, some very scary things, some surprising things I've been re-exposed to that relate to security and um, and uh, how you could be a, an innocent, unknowing victim. Uh, just because you're your Windows user, unfortunately. Um, I'll hopefully discuss a few things about um, who who does uh, some of the virus writing out there. I'll discuss quickly, um, but I'll also refer you to uh, the different videos that are out there that go into a little more. They're going to go into more depth than I am about some of the incidences that have, have been discovered. And they're really I, I would think they would be really shocking to a lot of Windows users out there as to um, just what could be could have happened to your computer and, and what uh, negative impacts could happen to you just because you're surfing the net with Windows and uh, I don't want to come across the wrong way um, this is a reason to use uh, in this for, for this topic, uh, <laughs> these sets of facts that I'm going to present to you will be a reason to use Linux, but it's also a reason to use Mac OS X. It's also a reason to use Haiku. So don't get the wrong impression by uh, by what I'm going to say here. <sighs> okay, so I guess I'll just start out with um, using Linux to restore your data. There's a very good tool out there, and it's called Nopix. And and actually, a lot of the distributions now have similar tools available. And they use they use the same methodologies that Nopix did originally to not only let you as a user preview Linux how it works, but also to conduct installations. On that disk that I had, that says the best of Linux is five different Linux distributions on there. They also use the Nopix method to um, to, uh, to to uh, perform an install installation. Now, the basic deal is this, is that the way Nopix works is you download Nopix from the Nopix website. And I don't know it offhand. It's a German website, but uh, you're, you're probably pretty certain that if you type in K N O P P I X, oh, there it is. Okay, <laughs> uh, you can go here, and then you can go to your, you know, get Nopics, right? And then you could um, you could buy it for a dollar ninety five, or you can just download it. And I I, I use BitTorrent for that. And, or you could um, use that go to a mirror actually one of these universities or places in the world is going to have uh, god there's a lot of them like you near know, the University of Wisconsin let's try that except his yeah, that's a pretty like a warning. If, if the mirror happens to be down, try Purdue. Come on. I got a lot of things to stay, say today. <laughs> you basically, you just go to that website and pick the full DVD. And what that'll, what that'll give you is a way at least to get into your system. You stick that DVD in your drive and you can It'll boot your system, 
and then I'm wondering why all these Nopic sites are down. Uh, anyway, I have to try to keep talking because I'm going to get too tired and then I'm just going to be babbling. Um, get that disk. But I would suggest maybe going to the Linux Mint site because it's good. Because I think that or, or Ubuntu and getting a live uh, install disk from one of those two sites, they're probably the most likely to install based on my recent experience or, or be usable. Boot you know boot into that after you burn the the DVD or CD. So you have to have you know blink DVDs or CV CDs from Fry's and then. You stick it in there after you burn it with whatever program you you happen to use. I guess Nero would work, or you know some of the computers that come Windows pre-installed, they'll they'll have that. Um, then you reboot your machine with the, the in there. It'll it'll boot up. It'll boot up without a problem. I you know obviously I can't do it on this computer, and most most of the time it'll work if you have. If you have at least um, probably Linux Mint or or Ubuntu, and then maybe if maybe uh, SUSEs between that those three disks, one of them, one of them will boot with a graphical user interface for you. And once you boot in there, you can click on your Windows hard disk and stick your thumb drive in there, and you could copy over your files, copy paste. It's, it's that way. Um, Maybe I'll do that sometime, but for now I'm just going to let you know that exists. It's probably a good part of a strategy. Another good part of a strategy is actually to have a, another partition on your hard disk and, and have Linux installed on that. The one that you like, the one that works for you. And the reason why I say that is because there is there's um, not only can you copy over your your data over to your Linux. Uh, Partition. If you ever find out that you're, you know, you have a bad virus and you gotta reinstall your Windows, well, you can put your stuff over there. Well, yeah, you can do that on a, do that on the thumb drive, but some of these viruses copy themselves over to the thumb drive. But when you're booted into Linux, the virus won't run because it's a, it's a binary file designed to run in Windows. It, it won't run in Linux. There was one proof of concept virus that would run in both, but there aren't. <laughs> there really aren't that many Linux viruses out there. It's almost negligible. In fact, it, it's to the point it is negligible, at least at this stage, and I, I don't anticipate it getting any worse, and I'll, I'll, I'll get into that. The next tool that you want to do is, in your Linux installation, in fact, probably as soon as you've got your Windows set up or restored, probably you want to do a new installation, truthfully. Is that um, you want to get a program called you want to download the free program free of cost called Part Image, and even though it looks like a DOS program when you run it, and you run it from the command line, you run it as root. It does an excellent job of backing up your partition. I've used it to back up and restore partitions uh, before when I've had to face a reinstall. And of course, before you restore your partition, you're going to want to back up the data you want to save out of out of it. So you don't lose anything. And of course, when you're dealing with a failing hard disk, it's you know booting into Linux probably isn't going to change the fact that your disk is fried. That's what Nopix is for. It'll get as much as it can. And there's even tools you can use in Nopix to even save uh, files from a disk that's just, that's unreadable. And those those tools also exist in. in and SUSE and all the other Linux distributions, as long as you take the time to, to download them. In Ubuntu, it's called um, GDD Rescue. Uh, the name sounds odd, but the, the command DD was a command that was historically used to uh, create a disk image of uh, whatever you wanted to copy. You, you have to know some parameters. With G disk image, it'll do the same thing as DD image, but it'll also try to compensate for any errors that it finds instead of just stopping. And I use that for an awful lot of my old floppies 
uh, save data that I wouldn't have otherwise been able to read. I'm talking 20 year old floppies or CDs that have scratches on the back, you can get your data back. So it's, it's a good thing to have. I'm going to stop here. Hopefully, I didn't go over 15 minutes. And I'll continue on with another.